What's up, y'all? Call me when you need some. Call me when you need some love. Call me when you need some. Ooh. Oh, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another podcast episode. It is me, Kiara Burke. And, and it's Joel L. Burke. <laughs> um, we are back. Um, thank you guys so much for waiting. We know that it's been a minute. You know, we was upgrading equipment, mm-hmm. just, you know, testing some stuff out or whatever. But, um, yes, we are back. And um, we're going to be talking about our journey with celibacy. Oh, yeah. I think it's a really good topic. A few people on my YouTube channel have said, like, they wanted us to dive deeper into that. And I really want to dive deeper into it, too. Um, mm. And I would love like in the future to have more people talk about this because I know a few people who have different stories and I would love to like get different people in here that represent, you know, Mm -hmm. that represent, you know, each people, each, each type of situation. So for us, um, if you guys don't know, we are Christians. We do believe that Jesus is Lord. Um, and so a lot of the things that we talk about have a biblical principle a lot of our mindset and everything is based in that that's our foundation so um we do believe that sex is for marriage and that you should not be having sex until you are married um and we did do a video talking about our relationship and a lot of people wanted to know did we wait until marriage we failed (laughs) we fell Right back into infinite void. Um, so we tried. So our journey to celibacy looked like this. Roller coaster, roller coaster. We, um, we, did, we, did, we did so good. While we, we were long distance, we did great. Um, I feel like we did good. Um, anyways, so what's it called? Um, abstinence. Is it abstinence or is it called celibacy? They're one and the same. No, one of them means you'll never have sex again. You're abstinent, like you're like you're refraining from. So is sexual. it abstinence or celibacy? What are if we? If I'm wrong, to say? I'm wrong. I'm about to Google it. I have it. no problem with correction. Abs- am, I, am I being rebuked? Abstinent. The fact of practice restra- yep. restraining from oneself. Abstinent and celibacy is like one and the same. Well, it says abstaining from ex- abstaining from marriage and sexual relations, typically for religious reasons, is, is celibate. I don't know. I heard one person say celibacy means like you'll never have sex again, or one of them means you never have sex ever, and one of them means you're just you're you're abstaining from a certain for for um, a certain yeah, amount I think of time. It, I, I think it depends on how you're saying it. Like, I know some people be like, I'm I'm being I'm abstinent for right now. Like they're trying to. Like, okay. but it's one and the same. It okay, so before we even got into a relationship, I was celibate. I knew that the person that I wanted to be with, like I knew for myself that I did not want to have sex with them until we got married. What about you? I was out here. Joel was a... I, I wouldn't say I was out here, out here, but I was like out there. You know Joel. what I mean? I was, I wouldn't be like, I'm not one of those people that'd be like, oh yeah, you know him? Like, yeah, he'd be, he'd be doing all it's like you wouldn't even know I was out there, but I was out there. He was a college athlete. I can explain to him. Six six, chocolate and fine. So y'all could go ahead and you know what he was doing. It's a letter that rhymes with Joe. I mean, it's a name. It's a word that rhymes with Joe. You better repent right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was doing. Nah, but um, you know, college being being an athlete, you know what comes. You know what comes with that lifestyle. And I was young. I was I moved to LA. I'm like, ooh, LA different. Okay. You know, coming from Delaware to move to Orange County, then you know, you get a taste of Orange County, then you just move to LA and it's like, you you where the party at? Mm. So I was out here. I was, you know, doing my thug fizzle. Did someone teach you to wait until marriage? Was that something that was ever taught to you growing up? Nah, it was it was never taught. But even even if it was taught, I feel like as boys and young boys, even as women and young young women, we have a sense of curiosity. 
So you, you be curious, you know, every time your parents say, oh, don't do drugs, don't do this, it's like trying to figure out why should I do that type, mm -hmm. of, you know what I mean? So I think I always had a curiosity. But it was never taught to you like, hey, wait until you're married to have sex growing up. From my memory, and mom, they give me, but I don't remember my <laughs> right. mom telling me. Yes. I mean, she'll tell you, like, if you're going to do it, I mean, be safe. Like, I'm sure Neek Dog like told that. you. But if Neek Dog told me, then, you know, I, I forgot. I got you, Neek Dog, if you did tell him. <laughs> um, for me, for sure, 100%, my mom was like, wait until you get married to have sex. Um, but I think in low... I'm pretty, I know my mama watching. Um, if I get it wrong, I'm sorry. But like, from what I remember, it was like, this is what you're supposed to do. But it also was like, you don't want to have kids before you're married. Like that mm. was my mom's thing. Like she told me and my sister that if we got pregnant when we were teenagers, we were, we were going to have to go live in a shelter. And she was so serious. Mm. So it was more so for me, like a fear like I was afraid to have sex outside of marriage because I was afraid to have a child and not be married and because I'm gonna have to go live in a shelter. <laughs> like, it sounds so bad, but like, that's but like for low, me, low. and low was so serious that's, that's and she, bad. and she will tell you to this day, 100%. But it, like, it was, I don't think she was sending us to like a rinky dink shelter, but it would be one of those shelters like that would teach you independence and, you know, how to raise your child. Like, that was that was where she was coming from. What shelters out there doing that for free? Because I, I, I lived in shelters before. And, lo, you do not want to send your, your daughter to no shelter. Well, praise God, I didn't have to go. <laughs> um, but for me, it was more so, of like, a fear thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not. And then growing up, you know, with a single mom and knowing, like, what that was like, I was like, no. Growing up, having my father wounds, I was like, no, I don't want to, you know, um, pass that on. So it was all out of fear, really, um, for a long time, for 21 years. OK, your girl held it down for 21 years. And then it just got to a point where I was just like I was meeting so many um, like even like women, you know, and they weren't waiting. So I was like, what's the point? And then they I was like, they still got married. They didn't wait. You know, like everything worked out. So that fear kind of started to go away. Um, and then I dibbled and dabbled in that lifestyle for a minute and I will always feel convicted, you know, every single time. So I would come back. Um, but by the time I got to you, by the time I entered into a relationship with you, I, I feel like that fear of me want, I feel like the fear that drove me to be abstinent or celibate turned into a more of a love thing for God. Like it was like, God, I love you so much. And I want to live my life the way that you want me to live it. So I'm going to do this for you. And then it also turned into, I see why uh, I seen the benefits of like waiting until you were married because I didn't, you know, credit soul ties with people and just all these other things that just made things so difficult and so just messy. Um, and then I, I seen the why. So by the time I met you, I felt like my head was like, okay, I want to honor God with my body and with my life. And I'm going to wait. This was my mindset. Okay. When I met him, <laughs> I mean, it was always my mindset. You know, my actions may have not always matched the mindset, but it helped me. Um, I mean, that was my mindset, you mm -hmm. know? So what about you? Like, was there ever a point in your life where you wanted to be abstinent? And if so, like walk us through mm. that. Yeah. Man, I'm, Keep I'm, it real. I'm, I'm, a, I'm my daddy's son. I'm my daddy's son for real. Um, what I does think, that mean? I think growing up, you know, a lot of people went through certain traumas, certain things in their life, which makes them either want to do or have sex, or, again, the curiosity. Um, I think in my, in my life, you know, growing up, I think it was certain traumas that happened, which brought, you know, sex and, you know, pornography and stuff into my life. It happened because of 
certain traumas. Mm-hmm. And I think as as I got older, you know, being a being a man, being a boy in school, you know how you how boys are, you know, especially when I, when you're at the age of getting girls is the thing. Mm-hmm. So of course your friends ask you, you you talk about it. You have those conversations like, oh, you know, you, you see such and such over there, like you going what you going to do with that type thing? You, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So I think that was a challenge too because you had a pr- it's like you you having to prove yourself to your boys like it's just like it's like a manhood type thing like I was able to have sex with such and such. It was so like bragging rights. It was like bragging rights. You so know you what I mean? never felt like at that time you didn't feel like no conviction or anything. I had no. You took like pride in like yeah, yeah okay. I had no no conviction at all. Okay. And you know so but once you get your first body, quote unquote. Um, of course, you're just going to want, you want to see how many you can get or you want more mm-hmm. and then your flesh takes over, you know? So as far as me, I, I just feel like I started at a young age and now, you know, going to college before I met you, um, then moving to LA, then once drugs get involved and once the party and get involved, it's like, that's just the life now. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I was out here just having, just having sex with just like a lot of women daily like Mm -hmm. it took me until i feel like i was a either a junior or senior in college to where you know sex with women it started to convict me Mm. like it didn't make me happy it's like once you once you finish having once i finished having sex with someone i didn't i didn't feel satisfied i just felt like like dang like you be happy for one second it's like an instant gratification then after that gratification you know, sorrow comes and it was like, mm. and then it makes you depressed and it makes you feel like, it makes you want to do more wrong in a sense because it's like you already did wrong. So you do more wrong to try to cope, to with cope the wrong with the wrong. Did. So it makes you even more sad. It makes you even more depressed. And I think that's what eventually, um, you know, I, 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 I dibble and dabble with drugs and then cause depression and stuff like that. But, um, Moving on to before I met you. Wait, hold on. Going back. So you said you felt convicted. Would you call it convicted or, or, cause I don't know what I heard is like emptiness. Like you felt empty, the emptiness empty, empty. instead of like, you know, conviction is from the Holy Spirit. You some know? people, some people feel convicted and don't even know it's the Holy Spirit that's convicting them. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So I think that's what I felt. I didn't know. Have a so you did sense. feel conviction or did you feel an emptiness? I felt both. Okay. I felt, I think I, I felt <laughs> both, but I just couldn't, I didn't, I was far from God. So, okay. um, yeah, I just, and can I explain like why, you know, people feel empty and stuff like that? Like, sure. Um, it's like, it's like an addiction. It's like a drug. It's like, again, once you have that, once you're satisfied and once you get that instant gratification of what you whether it's sex, whether it's drugs, once it's gone, reality will set in once again. And then we trying to keep we we continue to try to escape, but we can't escape mm-hmm. what's going on. Like mm-hmm. you gotta face yourself one day. And I think a lot of us are afraid to face it. You know what I mean? And it took me so I was a senior junior in college to understand like, yo, this can't this can't be what I continue to seek because I'm going to continue to feel empty Mm -hmm. and I'm going to continue to try to do this to fill a void. Yeah. Yes. And that emptiness after having sex with somebody is no bueno. Like as a woman, I definitely can relate. I haven't heard a lot of men say, I haven't heard a lot of men say, um, admit that like they feel that emptiness too, but it's probably like you said, they probably cover it up by, you know, continuing on. Um, but once I met yeah. you though. Yeah. So where was your mind at when you met me and how did you get there? So when I met you, that's when I was, I think I was seeking the Lord at that time. That's when I was really trying to get my life right. Mm-hmm. Um, and not to stray away from this conversation, but I feel like every time, you know, people try to get their life right with the Lord, mm-hmm. they still got to deal. They still have to deal with, the traumas or the the demons and the spirits that's that's in their soul. 
So as far as me, even once we start talking and we started getting our um, groove going, I still have, I still was dealing with those issues. I still was dealing with those, um, well, I need to have sex or you have these thoughts, you have these imaginations. You were when we, when we started talking, like when you was overseas and we was talking. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I still had a, I still had to deal with those, those things that I dealt, that I was doing mm-hmm. just because, you know, you, you, you find a woman that you like, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make the brain stop thinking or stop doing what it's used to doing. It's like, it's like a habit you created. Mm. And once you, it takes, it takes time to, to break that habit. So, you know, when we start talking, I wouldn't say I was just, oh, just focused on you. Like, oh, this is, oh, we you know. see what I'm saying? So, but I was still trying to get my life right with God, mm-hmm. you know, think, you know, for the grace that he has, he has given me. And I think that's what the things that I haven't dealt with in my soul it carried on to, you know, me end up having a child by <laughs> another woman because, <laughs> yeah, I think I haven't dealt, I, I haven't dealt with the things in my soul that, you know, had me in bondage. And that's what led up to me having a child by another woman because I couldn't deal, I couldn't control myself. Mm. I was, I gave, I was, I lived in my flesh too long to the point where my flesh took over, I feel like. I feel like my flesh, you know how, you, how they say you got to feed your spirit more than you feed your flesh? Mm-hmm. And when you're going through years of just feeding your flesh and then you try to walk in the spirit, you try to live in the spirit, it's going to be hard. It's, it's warfare. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's what led up to that. But I learned through you what it truly means to wait, um, to try to, to just, just, just the, just the, um, to try to wait until marriage because of all the things that goes wrong when you do it out of God's way. You know, I, 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 you, you showed me that. Like, it, it, you gave me a clearer understanding of why you shouldn't do that because of the, the circumstances and the, the situations you will put yourself into because you did it outside of God's way. You see what I'm saying? Okay, mm-hmm. just just so y'all know, Joel and I, we talked on and off for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, and with us talking, we were not in a committed relationship. Joel did have a daughter. He had a child. Um, and so once we started to get in a committed relationship, where was your head at regarding celibacy? Because in my opinion, I felt like you were all for celibacy because of what of what just happened, the, yeah. the fact that you, you know, you had a child mm-hmm. and all and all of that. That's what I'm saying. So when I met, that, not when you met me, when not we when got I together, met you. when we got together, yeah, that's when that. again I knew what you was on. I knew the principles, the the, the principles and the standards that you stood on. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? But in that, it showed me in my mess up as far as me having a child. Like that's what can happen. That's when me not doing it God's way. This what can ha- what happened to me is what can happen to others. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So that's what uh And so by the time you we got into a relationship, you was like, Oh yeah, let's wait. Yeah, let's yeah, because yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So his was kinda like a scare straight moment, would you say? Yeah, I'm, Did like, you say like yeah, would, would you I'm say stubborn that's what it and was? God and God <laughs> God has to scare me straight for me to see things for what it is like i'm hard-headed i'm i'm so hard-headed man i can't stand being hard-headed but he yeah is very i'm very hard-headed I'm very, I'm, are y'all I'm praying trying. for me pray for me pray for me pray for us okay um so you were scared straight mm-hmm. and you was like yep we on this and i i did have the fear but it also turned into this is what i'm supposed to do mm-hmm. so those were our mindsets entering into a relationship and so I have tried before in other relationships to wait until marriage, but I was always with someone who did not want to wait. I was always with a guy who just respected me. So he was like, I respect you. I respect your decision, which I personally, that has never worked out. That has never been successful. Ladies, if you are a Christian woman or a woman who just wants to wait, my number one tip is get you a man who want to wait too, um, because he can't do it 
for in my opinion, maybe there are some success stories out there where men were able to wait just because the woman did. But if the man don't have his own reasoning and his own revelation of wanting to wait, um, I just don't I just don't think that it is going to work. I don't think you guys are going to be successful. A lot of times in those past relationships that I was in, um, I was fighting myself and I was fighting the guy. So I of course, I'm a lose because I'm fighting you and I'm fighting me as far as like fighting my flesh and what my flesh wants. And, you know, I'm the one after the, the do is done, I'm the one with the conviction and, and the guy is not. So, um, for me, like I would highly suggest ladies, like if you do want to wait, like get you a man that wants to wait on his own. You cannot be the reason it can't be something that he respects. Like he needs to reverence it and, and he needs to, and he needs to see, um, the godly principle in it. If, um, if that's something that you all want to do, which I highly suggest, um, <laughs> I highly suggest that route, but, um, yeah. So Joel, you were the first person, the first guy that I was with who wanted to wait as well. Okay. So, you know, we both shared and we talked about our thought process, you know, leading up to, until we got together, right. Mm-hmm. Regarding celibacy. So now, um, you know, now that you're married and you went through that process, of dating and trying to remain celibate. What are your thoughts now on celibacy? Like, where do you stand with it? Um, I think celibacy is a. An abstinence. We'll just say it's, it's, it's the greatest thing that you could do for yourself. Mm. Yeah. I, I think it's the greatest thing you could do for yourself. The You can save yourself so much trouble. You can save yourself so much drama. And just waiting, Mm -hmm. you know, your flesh don't want to wait. Your spirit wants to wait. Your spirit wants to do the right thing. Your flesh don't want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the the greatest thing you could do for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I believe in celibacy abstinence and I encourage it um, for so many reasons. Like Joel said, um, just the things that you you keep yourself from, that you protecting yourself from by not engaging and not having sex with someone who's not your husband, um, you can save yourself a lot, you know? Um, so that's one reason. And the other reason why I encourage it is because, you know, it's something that God told us. I think that is the sin, right? If I'm wrong, let me know. But isn't that the only sin that you do that is against yourself? Isn't that in the word? Like, yeah, like now, it, what you want you, you like, commit a sin against yourself when you and against God too, it's right? It's like a, a sexual sin. Sexual sin does that. I okay, kind of outside of the more practical things, you know, like saving yourself from having kids before marriage or maybe having kids with someone who you, who's not your husband or birthing a generation with someone who you don't even need to be birthing generations with. That's a whole topic in itself. It's a, it's a lot deeper. Um, but just, just the obedience factor and the fact that our lives, I really truly believe our lives are not our own. We, we're not brought here on this earth to do what, whatever it is we want to do. Our lives are not our own. So we need to do what God wants us to do. Like I always use this analogy. Imagine someone who made an iPhone and the iPhone and they made the iPhone to be a telephone, to call people, to text people, to have communication with people. And the iPhone said, I don't want to do that. iPhone said, I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to text nobody. I don't want to be used for communication. I want to be used as art. So hang me up on the wall. Like imagine how um disrespectful and like a slap in the face it is to to the person who created it steve jobs right imagine how steve jobs would feel like no i didn't create you to to be an art piece on the wall i created you to be a form of communication so that's how i feel god is with us god created us to live a certain way and live a certain life when we decide to live our lives the way that we want to live it when we decide we're going to do some of the bible and not all of the bible or you know, we decide certain things as Christians, it's a slap in the face to God. And so, Mm -hmm. um, and this is just in the area of 
abstinence, celibacy, sex before marriage, you know, all of that. Um, so that's, that was my mindset by the time I entered into the relationship with you. And it still is my mindset now, not just towards sex before marriage, but towards a lot of things in life. Just to piggyback off what you said, um, how you was talking about how we were bought for a price. So our life, oh yeah, our mm-hmm. life isn't ours. You know, being Christian, we cannot live the life. We can't live a life that we want to live. We it's it's a difference between living the life that you want to live and living the life that we're called to live. Yeah, and sometimes we get caught up in living like the world. Mm-hmm. You know, we're supposed to be set apart. And if we were bought for a price, you got to understand that, you know, your life isn't yours no more. You know, Jesus Jesus paid the price for your sins. But even following Christ, you got to, God said, if you want to live, if, if a person wants to save his life, he will perish. But a person who gives up his life for me will have everlasting Lasting life. life. Yeah. You see what I mean? So I think that's what it comes down to. We have to understand our body our our body isn't ours. You know, we yes, this flesh is a vehicle, but we can't live the life that we that we seek to live. And understand that it's constant even though we got the free will, we have consequences that that come along with the things, the choices that we make. Right. A hundred percent. And like I said, outside of the practical reasons of why did not have, you know, sex before marriage, the more spiritual reasons too. Like you said, our life was bought with a price and we need to live life to God's standard. You know, I just feel like as a as Christians, we are living beneath God's standard in so many ways. Um mm, I, don't it's, wanna, I, it's, don't I know, that. especially just for the family structure, like the family just how families are structured, like that's really that's a burden I carry and that's something that um I'm really determined to live out the way that God, when God designed family and what he thought of, like, I want to live that out, but we are so we're living beneath it. Um, and sex before marriage is one of the ways that we are living beneath that standard. So if God said, you know, he designed sex to be within marriage, that's what needs to happen. In my opinion, that's what we need to be striving and aiming for. And it's a reason why he. It's a bunch of reasons why. It, but I'm saying it's a it's marriage with one woman is a reason why he created it for that purpose only because again, you know, having sex with multiple people, diseases, famine, immor- immor- immorality. You see what I'm saying? Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Look how look how sick they were living. You see what I'm saying? This, 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 the stench of their sins reach God's nose. Mm. You know how foul you got to be living <laughs> for the stench. Jeez, that. The stench of your sins to reach his nostrils. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, I think, I think sexual immorality. What is, is sexual immorality? Sexual immorality. I, um, sexual immorality. It's not only a, this, it's a, you're sinning against yourself, but it's just perversion. What is fornication? Fornication is sexual immorality. And sexual immorality is? I'm just asking you perversion. for people, people who are watching perversion, and may not know what that means. Perversion. Is that know, having sex outside of marriage? Is that sexual immorality? No, perversion is, perversion, perversion is, is a lot, is a lot, a mm-hmm. lot. Is fornication having sex outside of marriage? Fornication is yes. Yeah, I hear you, you, church you, people you don't say call, that all the time. You don't call. You don't call. You don't call. Um, when you're married, you don't say, "Oh, let's let's fornicate." No, <laughs> you know, let's make let's make love. Let's have sex. <laughs> you know, you see what I'm saying? But fornicate, pound town, yeah, you, just let pound town. Fornicating is for those <laughs> that aren't married. Fornicators. That's what you say. Fornicators. He doesn't say you know people. Fornicators. I'm just asking you, what's the difference between fornication and sexual immorality? It's 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 it, it goes into that list. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Perversion, so forni- sexual immorality, sexual immorality. I mean, immortality. Okay, well, anyways. Uh, <laughs> she gonna play me like that? Yeah. Cause what? Anyway. <laughs> nah, but it, it, it's a lot, man. It, it's 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 so deep. 
It's yeah, deep. it is so deep. And it's so deep that we got to do a part two because we didn't even really get an opportunity to share all the things that we wanted to share. Um, So stay tuned for part two because we will be going more in depth and getting more personal with you all talking about our journeys, um, where we messed up and things that we could do better just to help because listen, I know that everyone watching is not married and I am rooting for all of my single saved Christian people. Um, dating, I personally, I feel like as Christians are losing in the dating game. We are doing it so wrong. It is such a great area. The Bible really doesn't talk about dating and it's just so much stuff. And it's all this stuff. A lot of times we have married people talk about marriage, but like, I, I really feel like it's on my heart to serve the dating people because I wish like the stuff I be putting out, I wish that someone would have, I wish I could have ran across a video like that, you know, back when we was dating, just to talk about practical stuff. And I'm a firm believer in talking about something once you have, um, once you're out of that season, you know, like I just, when we were dating, I didn't feel like it was right for us to talk about celibacy because that was a journey we were still walking through. So like we are past that now. And now we can talk to you guys from Here's what we did. Here's what worked. Here's what didn't work. And here's what you can do. So, yeah, y'all stay tuned for part two because we're going to dive in deeper. Thank you so much for watching um, or listening, whatever you're doing. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Kiara, K-I-A-R-A-B-R-K. And you can follow Joel on Instagram. At J-O-E-L-B-R-K. <laughs> okay, you did not have to come Instagram. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to have some light on your on your platform i'm gonna have some light okay anyways um <laughs> so yeah um uh, what was that it was one more thing that i was gonna say oh be sure to like this video comment something below if you're watching and subscribe if you're not already subscribed already y'all okay so we about to get on out call me when you need some call me when you need some Auto tune. Oh, stop doing that. Oh. You're pissing me off. Don't do that on my podcast. Do that on yours. Am I regular? Call me when you need That's some. Good. Now we gotta do it all over again. Call me when you need some. Let's do our answer. Call me when you need some love. Call me when you need some. <laughs> okay. Call him. You better call Jesus. Come time around. <laughs> you better pass me my phone.